How much more of this do you guys have? <laughs> the wedding ended up being this major catastrophe, no matter how many good intentions. But at yes. the same time, the wedding did happen, so they're now happily married. <laughs> yeah, I think it's happily married. Well, I think they're happy. I know. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an intense, I mean, it was a total wipeout. And the, the fear is, you know, Bree probably already said this, the fear is that lesser things have happened in the world of Grimm that have alerted the authorities to the fact that Grimm and Avesson are like friends, let alone best man. And two, you know, Vesson of different whatever, you know, so I think that this total wipeout at the wedding is going to lead to ugliness. Well, they, I don't know, but I think so. There was some debate whether or not his, any of those other Grimms that were in attendance, are not Grimms, the Vesson um, recognized Nick as a Grim because he lost his powers. Well, he had lost his powers and he was wearing glasses, which I guess were like uh, unnecessary because he had lost his powers, although he didn't know it. So I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Nick is out. Um, Trouble is out, but no one knows who she is anyway. You know, he's sort of a public figure. He's a, he's a cop, and he's been living in Portland for a long time. We're at risk because, like I said, lesser things have happened that, you know, people know about. So I feel like we're in trouble. So the spotlight's on them. Could they be on the run now? I feel like something like that maybe could happen where, where it turns into, it's a little dark, you know? I mean, it was so easy for Monroe and Rosalie last year, you know? I mean, the parent thing for me was a little weird. You know, there was some wedding trauma, but there was, it was all very run-of-the-mill daily stuff that we all deal with. I think it's going to get a little heavier. I mean, again, I don't know, but I can't imagine it would. Yeah. So, if you could have chosen any kind of mythical creature, would you have chosen? I'm very canine-oriented. <laughs> I mean, I'm really a dog person, um, and I feel like it's a, it's the right thing for me. Uh, I think it's a good fit. I have anger issues. Not really, but like, I can get hot quick, you know? So, like, I relate. So it was an easy... Yeah, I fit right in. <laughs> right into being a rapacious... Animal. That's. Oh gosh, you know, I mean, I, I would do it in a second, but I highly doubt it. I think we're sort of too integral to this world. I think spin-offs tend to be more like the ancillary character gets their own. You know what I mean? We're too integral to. I think it would be cannibal. We'd be cannibalizing ourselves to use that again to to, to take us away to build something else. It'd be like splitting a tree in two to try to make two trees to kill both. <laughs> so where, where do they turn to? Who do they seek a source of protection now that Nick's not their source of protection? Well, we got trouble, but she's a child who's brand new to this. A troubled child, no pun intended. Uh, so I, I, really, we're, 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 I think we're, we'd be on our own because... And we'd have to probably go to the council, you know, maybe. Um, and she's much closer to the council than I am. So I think that the fact that he is not able to do that is a big threat, in other words. And I mean, I'm nervous enough as it is, for God's sake. I don't need this. I finally calmed down, you know, found a partner, and now that it gets all screwed up again. <laughs> you good? All right. All right.